some common formulas that you need to know for GRE. So some common formulas which you need to memorize. Okay. First one. A plus B squared, which is just a shorthand for A plus B times A plus B. If you expand this out and add the middle terms, what you'll get is A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. Very important formula for GI. Need to memorize that. Similarly, if you have A minus B squared, you get the same thing except the middle term now has a negative sign, negative 2AB plus B squared. And the third formula is a plus b times a minus b. Okay, and this gives you a squared minus b squared. You can expand out these brackets and prove it to yourself that when you will multiply everything out, you'll get the right hand side. So this needs to be memorized very well. Okay. Good. Let's do a problem. All right, here's one. If c squared plus d squared is four, okay, they tell us this thing, and c minus d squared, the squared, is two, what is the value of c times d? Okay, so if you, the, the formula that we just did, you know, remember we had a minus b squared equals a squared minus two ab plus b squared. So how would I use that formula here? So I'll have c squared minus 2cd plus d squared, and that's equal to 2, according to the question. Now, the question tells me that c squared plus d squared is 4. So I have a c squared here, I have a d squared here. These two should add up to 4, and then the other term remaining here is negative 2cd equals 2. Now you see, you can solve for cd here. So how about I take this two to this side it will become negative 2 and negative 2 cd on the right side will become positive 2 cd so i'll have 4 minus 2 equals 2 cd okay so i'll have 2 equals 2 cd and cd equals 2 right which is c. sorry cd equals 1. that's the careless mistake please try to avoid those Let's look at a couple of more examples. All right, here we have what is the value of this big number squared minus this big number squared. Well, you might be tempted to take out the calculator and do it, but I'll just, I'll try to warn you that these numbers are too big to be done in the calculator that will be available to you on the GRE exam. So you have to be smart about it. We know the formula a squared minus b squared is equal to a minus Oops, let me rewrite that. A minus B times A plus B. So how about we try to use this formula, since this can be taken as our A, this can be taken as our B, both are being squared, as the formula wants us to do. So, so then what we'll have is my A, which is a million and a one, minus my B, which is, Nine 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 nine. Okay, and then the same thing but with a plus sign. Okay, it will be good to know here that the a here is just a million plus one, and b is a million less one. Okay, so if I have a million one minus a million less than one, I'll get two. Okay, what about here? I have a million and a one, and I'm adding, this should be a plus, right? I'm adding a one less than a million, so this will give me two million. Okay, try to prove this to yourself, that this is what we'll get, what you'll have. Okay, again, trying to do this in your head would save you a lot of time. And then I have two times two, which would give me four million. Okay. So that's my answer for million. Good. 
All right, let's do another one. Okay. All right, before we go into this one, I want to go through just the one minor thing, which is division of expression. It's pretty straightforward, but it's good to spend a minute to review it. So, all right, so we'll quickly talk about dividing algebraic expressions. So, so let's say we have 3a squared b over a. This is a simple division. It's just an exponential rule, exponent rules. You have a squared at the top and a at the bottom. You'll just subtract one from the power in the numerator a, which is 2, right? So you'll have 3a2 minus 1. I'm just writing the steps out so you know, uh, which would be equal to 3ab. Right? Simple exponential rules, right? What about when you have more than one term in the numerator? So let's say we have 3a squared b plus 3a b squared, right? And I want to divide this by ab, let's say, okay? So one way to simplify this is let's distribute out the denominator to both the terms in the numerator. So what I mean by that is that you can write your denominator term under the first term in the numerator and you can do the same for the second term in the numerator. Okay, now you can do your simplification. 1b here, 1b will cancel out. 1a here, 1a here will cancel out. a squared over a will give you a single a in the numerator. And similarly, b squared over b would give you a single b in the numerator. So that's how you can divide algebraic expressions where you have more than one term in the numerator. All right, let's look at another problem here. So we have what is the value of this expression when x is this? Again, we can't use, don't use the calculator here. You can't even use it because the number is too big. Uh, so let's try to simplify our expression. So how about in the numerator, I have x cubed and an x. How about I try to factor out an x from the numerator? So but then what I mean is that I'll do this. So I'll take out an x. So in the first term, which was x cubed, I'll be left with an x squared because I took out an x. In the second term, because it's only x which I took out here, I'll have one left. Okay. And the numerator stays the same. And just to save time, I'll going to write these two, uh, these two colon, which just says the numerator is the same. Uh, now I can do something more with the, with the numerator. So look at this thing. How about I write 4x as 2x squared minus 1 and 1 I can write it like this. So now this is something that you have seen a formula for a squared minus b squared, right? And that's equal to a minus b, a plus b. Good. Again, the numerator is same. I'm just going to write this. So let's use the formula my a so a is now 2x and b is 1 so I have 2x minus 1 and I'll have 2x plus 1 cool and now let's write down the numerator the denominator sorry the 2x plus 1 over 6x minus 3 now you see 2x plus 1 in the numerator 2x plus 1 in the denominator cancel out and what I'm left with is x times 2x minus 1 over 6x minus 3. Well, hold on. Still, I can I can simplify this more. So how about in the denominator, I factor out a 3. See, I have a 3 here, I have a 6 here. I can factor out this 3. For 6x, I'll be left with a 2x now. And for 3, I'll just be left with a 1. Which is, now this term 2x minus 1 is similar in both numerator and the denominator. I can get rid of it. I'm left with x over 3. See how much I was able to simplify it by simple algebraic manipulation. And now I can plug in my x value, 9999. Now divide that by 3, I'll get 3, 3, 3, 3. Okay, that's my answer. Okay, let's look at a couple more problems.
If a squared minus b squared is 21, all right, let's write that down. a squared minus b squared is 21. And a squared plus b squared is 29. a squared plus b squared is 29. Which of the following could be the value of a, b? I have to indicate all possible values. Remember, whenever you have the square uh, signs next to your or in or outside your choice, it means you can select as many as are correct. Okay, you don't have to select one. You can select one or more than one. Okay, I'm trying to find values, all possible values of a, b. Okay, so how would I do this? I have these two equations. I'm going to add the two equations. I'm going to add the two equations. So a squared and a squared, they are two like terms and they are added, I get 2a squared. Negative b squared and positive b squared, well, they just cancel out. They will be zero, right? We have a negative one, positive one, it should be zero. 21 and 29, if I add that, I get 50. So I have 2a squared equals 50. Well, let's divide both sides by two. I'll get a squared, a squared equals 25. And if I take the square root on both sides, I'll get that a is 5. Well, a can also be negative 5. Remember, since it's squared, 25, when I take the square root, I can have a 5, I can have a positive 5, or a negative 5. All right, let's try to find the value of b. So I'm going to pick up one of the equations. So let's say I take a squared minus b squared equals 21, and I'll, which is the first equation, and I'll plug in 5 for a, or negative 5, it doesn't matter, because it's squared. So I have, I'll have 5 squared, which is 25, minus b squared equals 21. Now if I solve here by taking 21 to this side, I'll have 25 minus 21, take b, negative b squared to the other side, I'll have b squared, so 25 minus 20, 25 minus 21 is 4, equals b squared, and again, if I take the square root, I'll have b equals 2, or negative 2. Okay, so five times, now, now I have to find the value of a, b, right? And a can be five or negative five, b is negative five, it is two or negative two. So now you'll see that if you multiply, you could either have 10, positive 10, or you can have negative 10. These are the only two possible values that you could have when your a is this and b is this, right? Which is choice a and choice c. Cool. Let's look at another problem, which is a quantitative comparison question. It says D is less than C, okay? And then quantity A has C minus D times C plus D, and quantity B has C minus D times C minus D. All right, one thing to realize here is that if C is always greater than D, then C minus D would always be positive, okay? You can check that for yourself, right? So let's say C is five, D is three, five minus three, which is two, which is positive. You can try it with negative numbers also, and you'll see this is, this is the same. Now, I have C minus D here on the left side, I have C minus D here on the right side in column B. What I can do is I can just drop it. Now you can only do that when you're sure the C minus D is positive, okay? If it's not, if it's negative or if it's zero or something else, then that creates problems. So only case when you can drop terms from your columns is when they are positive, okay? So now you're left with comparing C plus D with C minus D, right? Now, C is, it's common in both sides, so you can drop the C out, and you're left with comparing a positive D with a negative D, okay? So what do you think? In this scenario, what's the answer here? Well, let's pick up some values. So how about if D is zero? Well, if D is zero, I'll have zero here, I'll zero here, zero here, which will say choice is C. Well, D can be anything, what if D is one? Well, then I'll have one in column A and negative one in column D, and then the answer would be A. Well, this means neither of these can be right, and the correct answer is D. Okay? So important thing, the trick is there that you can drop the C minus D term, C minus D bracket actually, from both sides. 
and the only reason you can do it is because you know it's positive okay uh, so when things are being multiplied like over here your two brackets multiplying you can drop them drop a similar bracket if the if you're confident if you're sure that the value it represents is a positive value okay uh, whereas when you are at this step you can just drop c even though you're not sure whether it's positive or negative because it's just being added to d you know it's the same thing that's being added to d you can just neglect it and then compare d and negative d right i hope this makes sense this completes our uh, quick review of the algebra part